everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Globe Interview Series. Today I'm delighted to welcome onto the show Abigail Lee, founder of Cryptocurrency Teens. How are you, Abigail? Hi, I'm good. Thank you so much for inviting me to this. It's really great to be here. Thank you for taking the time. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? So could you tell us a bit about your background and how you came into the crypto sphere? Yeah, so I'm a junior in high school in New York City. And so um, even though I was born in Connecticut and briefly like lived in California, um, I've primarily grown up in Singapore and Taiwan. Um, so I'm really glad that I got a chance to like live in Asia during my childhood years and kind of like experience that culture. Um, but for like middle school and high school, I have been here in New York and um, it was here where I kind of like first got into the crypto sphere because I um, interned at like a crypto exchange over the summer. And that was pretty much where I was like exposed to a lot of different aspects of cryptocurrency. Um, I was doing mostly just marketing and demand generation related pro- projects. Perfect. So, you know, as a teenager in high school yourself, um, where did you hear about blockchain technology? So I know you said you you went on your internship. So how did you hear about the internship and what was your experience like in entering the world as an intern? Right. So I think I first heard about blockchain um, a really long time ago when I was like, pretty young. um, And I was obviously just, I didn't know much about it. And I first like got interested and I started reading um, more about it. And that's pretty much like where I learned like the very basics of it, like through the internet. Um, And then from there, I was like, oh, this seems really interesting. So I decided to kind of apply to get this internship. And from there, that's pretty much where my um, like knowledge really like got much deeper because Um, The projects that I was I was assigned to, they were mostly um, in marketing and the business development teams. Um, And I had to do things like search for potential crypto hedge fund executives through LinkedIn um, to build like a list of contacts for this um, exchange to reach out to to see if they were interested in opening account at our crypto exchange. And like from there, um, I had to like gradually just learn a lot um, along the way. Overall, my experience as an intern was it was it was like, it was pretty um, normal. I've done other internships. Um, It was really great because I think everyone in the crypto um, industry, they're all really great. And they're all like very open to new people and just teaching the younger generation. So I felt like I definitely learned a lot. Um, Yeah. I can go into more detail about like what I did specifically, but. That's lovely. So, um, so you said you were, you know, learning on the internet about blockchain and everything. Is there any uh, specific sites that you would like to recommend or? Right. Yeah. So um, one of the reasons why I started Cryptocurrency Teens was because I felt like there weren't a ton of really great sites um, out there um, for like teenagers specifically, because a lot of the information is very dense. I wouldn't recommend what I did, which was I did take a look at a lot of like white papers from like different um, companies. Um, I think that's like a little bit difficult for a lot of like teenagers who are just interested in getting into the industry. So um, like my website kind of like tries to um, present information in a really like easy to understand way. And in our resource section, we have a bunch of um, like pretty good websites linked as well. So if anyone wants to check that out. Um, Yeah, but also I do recommend YouTube for sure. YouTube's great. Perfect. So we can find some, you know, easily digestible information on your website, right? Yeah. Um, I would say our, our, we have our own podcast, which I have run and I've um, found that a lot of like our guest speakers um, are really great at like presenting information in a really like digestible way for teenagers. Perfect. So, um, you know, going into the world of crypto, what have been the reactions of the people around you when you told them you wanted to go into crypto? Like, were you discouraged or supported in your decision? Right. So firstly, I would say like my parents um, are definitely like super excited for me and everything that I'm doing. Um, But in general, I would just say like the main group of people who have been really supportive of me are people who are already within the crypto industry 
Um, for example, like a lot of the people that I've interviewed have been extremely supportive. Like I said, everyone in like the crypto and blockchain industry, they're all super supportive. Um, and they're they're all like really excited to help like younger people learn more. So definitely reach out to them. Um, so for example, um this coming summer, I'm I have the really um great chance to work with one of the people that I interviewed, this professor who teaches blockchain to write a research paper. Um and I think that it's like, it's amazing that I get this opportunity to do so. So, and it's only through the support of all the people who are already within the crypto industry that I've managed to get this far. Amazing. What is it about crypto that really fascinates you? Um, I would say it's not just like crypto itself, but I would say it's more like blockchain. And I think it has a lot of practical applications. Um, for example, like my research paper, the topic about it, it's about how like blockchain technologies can be used to like reduce poverty in the world or increase financial inclusion. And that's a topic that has very commonly been brought up in a lot of like my podcast episodes, because a lot of professors have basically talked about the uses and impacts of blockchain beyond just like, oh, blockchain is like something like that like in crypto and crypto is like um, used for like trading and stuff like that. Um, I don't think a lot of people, especially teenagers, really understand that blockchain is like it's big because its impact, it's it goes beyond just like um, like crypto trading. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So are your peers in high school interested in blockchain? And um, yeah, if they are, what excites them about blockchain? Yeah, so it's obviously really hard to generalize like high school students. Um, so like I've been in school and I've like overheard like people talking about like crypto and sometimes like they don't really like fully understand like crypto. Um, but I think there definitely like is interest there to kind of like learn more and understand more about it. It's just that there isn't a lot of like resources. There aren't a lot of resources available for teens, which is something um, my organization tries to remedy. Um, and also, um, I have like a group of high school students who work as interns um, at Cryptocurrency Teens, and they're all extremely like passionate and interested and excited to learn about blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Um, yeah, so I think that teens really should learn more about it because um, a lot of them don't appreciate how amazing this technology is to really transform like many different industries on a global basis. And so um, I'm glad to like to like help um, the interns at my organization do so. Amazing. So, right, speaking more on the goals of cryptocurrency teens. So uh, on your website, it says education, engagement and help with scholarship programs. So could you expand on this a bit more and tell us how you're reaching these goals? Yeah, so our main goals are to educate teens on crypto um, and the blockchain industries and also encourage teens who are thinking more, thinking about going into this industry in the future as a career to kind of study it um, in college or just like consider going into this industry after they graduate. Um, so I think the most successful part of Cryptocurrency Teens um, is definitely our podcast because um, we've reached out to many C-level executives and professors um, in the blockchain and crypto industry, and many of them have been very generous with their time and energy. And um, in their interviews, they've basically given um, a lot of like helpful information from like either their experience teaching or um, tips they have in terms of like financial wellness and like just like getting into the industry in general. So something else that's really exciting is that like a middle school has reached out and seen and asked they can partner with us, to, like teach middle school students more about crypto. Um, yeah, so we're in the process of creating this training, which will be delivered like sometime in February, I think. Um, and yeah, once we conduct our first training session, we'll be able to reach out to other schools and like do this training um, with other schools as well and really expand this program. Um, and finally, you mentioned our scholarship program. Um, where students can write an essay about why financial literacy is important. And then we would get sponsors such as like crypto exchanges to sponsor the scholarship awards. Um, we've been really busy just like kind of starting up. So uh, my volunteer business development team um, and myself, we've been really a little bit too busy to reach out to a lot of these crypto exchanges and pitch them on why they should be a sponsor. Um, like the minimal level of sponsorship is only $100. So 
Um, and we're not really asking with sponsors to send the funds directly to us, but directly to the scholarship winners. So right now we're thinking of postponing the first scholarship program to next year instead of this year, which gives us more time to kind of um, get more sponsors. And a lot of the people that I've interviewed have already like agreed um, that they would love to help out the sponsorship program. Right. That's amazing. So who can apply? Yeah, any high school student can apply um, if they're from the U.S., and it's pretty simple. Everything's on our website. It's not um, too long of an essay. It's just, um, I think it's only, there's like a word limit. So yeah, I recommend everyone who's listening to definitely check that out, either to become a sponsor or to um, apply for our um, scholarship. So uh, I appreciate you're super busy right now, you know, not having any time to, you know, find sponsors for the scholarship program. However, do you have plans to maybe, you know, shift from just the U.S. in globally? Right. So already a lot of our interns, um, they come from like all different countries. Um, and a lot of our like when I checked like the website analytics, um, you can see that a lot of our resources are being like looked at from people all over the globe. And already I've interviewed professors and um, like crypto thought leaders who are like all over um, all over the world as well. So definitely um, we're we're planning to expand the scholarship um, globally, but already like crypto teens um, has basically reached um, everyone around the world that's the magic of the internet right <laughs> so why do you think that it's important that teenagers or like gen z are specifically targeted right so i think there are obviously a lot of amazing sources of information about um crypto or the blockchain industry um already out there but um these sources like coin market cap coin desk coin telegraph all of that um, like anyone of any age can like find these to make informed decisions on like what crypto assets to invest in. But um, I think it's very, it's not as easily digestible for teens as like what we're doing, which is um, like a lot of our sources are written by teens um, with like the, and our podcast series, it's more geared towards teens specifically as like an audience. Um, additionally, there are a lot of like shady tokens that launch and a lot of unsafe investment opportunities. Um, so there are a lot of like pump and dump projects. So here at Cryptocurrency Teens, we kind of want to encourage teens to learn more about not just like crypto and crypto, but also to learn more about important topics that go like hand in hand with it, like dollar cost averaging, like which is like putting aside an amount to invest in every month. Um, allocating the amount to invest in different traditional asset classes, as well as crypto um, wallet classes. So while we're doing that, we want to like warn teens to be super, super careful about doing the necessary research into um, a coin project's white paper, their founding team, um, the global problems the token is trying to solve, stuff like that. And that's something that's definitely emphasized by a lot of like professors um, who join the podcast to talk. And so overall, our main goal, I would say, is to get teens really excited about the blockchain and crypto space, but in a very, very safe way. Yeah, I think the safety is such an important factor in crypto since it's so volatile and you have so many like shady people trying to take advantage. <laughs> right. So you were talking about your podcast and yeah, you obviously, you know, have some very impressive guests you know, from professors to CEOs. So could you tell us a bit about um, what made you want to start a podcast and how you're able to find such impressive and, you know, quite possibly intimidating guest speakers? Yeah, so I think one of the main reasons why I wanted to start a podcast was firstly, I really enjoy speaking to people. Um, I love like chatting and stuff like that. So I thought that um, other teens who are kind of like me would also enjoy this medium as well. Um, like podcasts have like some of like, um, podcasts are like a really great way to like exchange information. Um, like a teenager who might be like going on a walk, they can just like um, dial in and listen. Um, that's definitely something that I've done before. And I think it's like a really great um, tool. So instead of like reading about something in like a textbook, white paper or article, which is a little bit like dry and sometimes can be really boring. Um, I know it was pretty boring for me because like I, I'm not a big fan of reading. Um, 
except for like enjoyment. Um, so when I had the chance to like interview a thought leader, it really gave me the opportunity to learn a lot about like um, a new company, a new set of like products or services, their vision on how to improve the world. And I thought that was really fascinating. Um, so I was really excited to interview all of these people. Um, and in terms of like how to find like impressive guest speakers, I would say that um, firstly, I learned a lot of these like skills during my internship at the crypto exchange during lead, doing lead generation. Um, like firstly, in terms of um, a sales funnel, you have to reach out to a very large number of leads and only a small fraction of them will pan out. Um, but then once you start to like engage with those who reply back, um, like only a small amount of them will want to be interviewed. So basically I just reached out to an extremely large number of executives and professors through LinkedIn to ask them to connect with me and um, ask them to be interviewed. And so once I started to publish a podcast and made it easier for more and more thought leaders and professors to, inter uh, to agree to like um, join, um, yeah, so for example, like one specific person that I've interviewed um, was um, Professor Ari Jules, who teaches blockchain at Cornell, um, and he's also the director for like initiatives for cryptocurrencies and contracts. So once I published his episode, a lot more people were really um, willing to join on. Um, I would say in terms of how intimidating it can be, again, Ari um, like when I first interviewed him, I was, just, it, he was just like a normal professor to me as I've interviewed a few professors. Um, but then afterwards we started getting a lot more like traction with that specific interview episode. And then, um, I did even more research and I was like extremely intimidated by how impressive his background was and how much like in-depth work he's been doing. So I would say like, since I'd already interviewed so many people, it wasn't really that intimidating. Um, it they just felt like um, it just felt like having a chat with someone. So it was pretty great um, to just like relax and just treat it as like an informal talk where we kind of like exchange information. And um, I got a chance to learn and help other people learn as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. So, who has been your favorite person so far that you've interviewed? Um, definitely, I've loved interviewing everyone. Everyone brings like a super different take on things and um, everyone's been super friendly and amazing to talk to and super engaging, obviously. Um, I think definitely my favorite person at the moment um, would be Jillian Godsell, who I had the privilege to interview quite recently. Um, my interview with her was a lot of fun and I learned a great deal. She's this like very charming British lady. Um, her accent was really um, entertaining for me because I'm American. Um, and also everything she had to say was really insightful. And overall, I thought her personality um, was just exceptional. I know. Yeah, we we actually had the pleasure of um, interviewing her as well. She was amazing. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, no, so I can see why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's just amazing. I love Jillian. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me again. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the Globe Official channel. Please follow the links to Abigail's socials if you'd like to see what she's up to with cryptocurrency teens. See you next time. Bye. Bye.